Hello people from the future, welcome to Normalize Nerd. Today I want to talk about how large language models generate human-like text. You might think that something really complicated must be going on to generate such text. But surprisingly, we have some relatively simple statistical methods at play here. It's fascinating how these simple methods can generate some really complex writings. So without any further ado, let's get started. First, let me give you a high-level overview of what a language model does. Let's have our language model and an input token sequence, aka the prompt. It trains a lot in the. We want our language model to complete this sequence. To keep it simple, throughout the video, I'll use tokens and words interchangeably. The model takes the input tokens and outputs a probability distribution over its vocabulary. Well, the vocabulary is just a set of tokens it has seen during its training. A higher probability means the model thinks that particular token is more likely to follow the given input tokens. To add some mathematical rigor, let's denote the input tokens as x and index them from 1 to t. So the model's output is a probability distribution for the t plus 1x token given the previous t tokens. VI here denotes the ith token in the vocabulary. For text generation, we use some kind of sampling strategy on this distribution to iteratively pick the next token. These strategies are called decoding techniques, and there are many of them. Let's look into some of the most popular ones. The first one I have for you is called greedy search decoding. It's the simplest one. Let's have our LLM and the prompt again. We pass the input to the LLM and get the probability distribution. Now in greedy search, we simply choose the most probable token. Here you can see, summer has the highest probability. So we pick that one. Let's do it one more time. We add summer to the prompt and do the process again. This time, Comma has the largest token probability, so we choose that one. We can repeat this process as long as we want. At this point, you might be thinking, okay, so that's all we need. Just take the most likely token and move on. Then why do we even need anything else? Well, there are some problems with this greedy strategy. No doubt, this is the fastest decoding technique. However, there are two major problems. The first one is, it's very repetitive. If it encounters a phrase with very high probability, it will keep repeating it until the end of time. The second one is, it's short-sighted. What I mean by this is, it will only pick the token that is most likely for the current step, but it might miss a sequence that is more likely in the long run. Let's see an example. I prompted Mistral to tell me about apples. Using greedy search decoding, it returns this. It starts pretty well, but soon it begins to repeat itself over and over. However, when I used beam search, a different decoding technique, it generated a significantly better output. I'll return to beam search later, but for now, just think how much of an impact the decoding strategy can make. Remember, the model was exactly the same. Okay, so hopefully you are convinced that we need something more than a greedy search. Let's look at decoding with sampling. Again, we pass the input to the model and get the probability distribution. However, this time, instead of choosing the most likely token, we randomly pick a token based on the probability. The higher the probability, the more likely the token will be picked. So, we are still most likely to choose summer, but other tokens also get a chance, which was not the case before. So this time, we pick mountains. This looks promising, but it has a severe flaw. Can you guess what? Let us scroll down toward the tail of the probability distribution. You see, tokens like cat and dog, which are completely irrelevant to the input, might also get selected. Although very rarely, they still have a chance, right? In those cases, the generated text 
will look very weird. To overcome this issue, we have top K sampling. The idea is very simple. We first sort the tokens based on their probabilities and keep only the top K tokens. Here I'm keeping the top seven tokens. See that if we apply sampling now, no matter what we end up selecting, it's very likely that the selected token will be related to the input. Now, of course, if you make K too big, it will start including irrelevant tokens, but at least we now have a way to remove them. Now let's move on to another technique named nucleus sampling, AKA top P sampling. The idea is very similar to top K, but instead of specifying the number of tokens, we specify a probability threshold. Let's say I set the threshold P as 82%. What we need to do is keep the minimum number of tokens whose probabilities add up to at least 0.82. Here, the cumulative probabilities of the first five tokens add up to 0.82. Hence, we keep them and ignore the rest. Then we sample a token as usual. A small detail I should mention here is that in both top K and top P, after removing the tail tokens, we need to redistribute the probability mass among the remaining tokens. This can be done by simply applying the softmax function to the raw logit scores of the top tokens only. Now let me show you temperature, another parameter to tweak the probability distribution. For this, we need to take a step back. The output of the language model is actually called logit scores. The logit scores don't add up to one and can even contain negative numbers. To get the probabilities, we apply the softmax function to it. Here's the formula for the softmax. The xi denotes the logic score. What if before applying the softmax, we scale the logic scores by a factor t. This factor is referred to as temperature. Let's see how this parameter changes the shape of the probability distribution. For a temperature of 0.2, it looks like this. Notice that the distribution got sharpened. The higher tokens dominate the lower ones. If we bring the temperature up to two, the opposite thing happens. The distribution got flattened. What happens when we make T too extreme? When T tends to zero, only the most probable token stands and everything else goes to zero. This case actually approaches our greedy search technique as we always choose the most likely token here. On the other hand, when we make T too big, the distribution approaches a uniform distribution. Clearly, temperature has a dramatic impact on the generation. See these examples. We bring our Apple prompt back and generate two mistral output. Notice that on the left where the temperature is low, the model output stays on topic and feels kind of restrictive. However, on the right, the generated text feels less restricted and more creative. That's because the lower probability tokens got a better chance of appearing. So in a sense, we can control the creativity of the model using temperature. I want to show you one last technique known as the beam search. The idea is to keep track of more than one generation sequences, AKA beams and choose the one with maximum probability. Let's set the number of beams as three and see how it might look in our running example. We start by storing the top three tokens. Then from each of these tokens, we generate three more. At this step, we have nine possible generation paths or beams, but we have set the number of beams as three. So we will keep only the top three beams. By the way, to compute the probability of a beam, we just multiply the probabilities along that path. If we were to stop the search here, we would return the most probable sequence among these three, which happens to be this one. It rains a lot in the Pacific North, Recall that with greedy search, we found the path with summer, but clearly in the long run, Pacific North turned out to be a more likely generation. In practice, 
we keep on going until all the beams reach some stopping criteria like the end of sentence token. Beam search improves on the greedy search by expanding the search space. If we increase the number of beams, we are more likely to find the most optimal generation sequence. But in doing so, we will also increase the computation cost. So beam search is not always the option. Now, of course, you will find all these methods implemented in the generation function of transformers library. But if you want to get your hands dirty, you can check out my implementations. You will find the GitHub link in the description. Please feel free to modify the code and combine different techniques to get the best generation. So that's all I had for today, guys. I hope you learned something new. And if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to this channel. Stay safe and thanks for watching.